Hey kiddos. So I'm back for chapter four of Goonie Bird Green. This is a long chapter, so sit back and relax to listen. On Monday, Goonie Bird stood in front of the class when Mrs. Pigeon told her it was story time. The children barely noticed Goonie Bird's clothes, even though she was wearing a ruffled pinafore, dark blue knee socks, and high top basketball sneakers. The second graders and Miss Pigeon, too, were all much more interested in Goonie Bird's earrings. The earrings dangled and glittered and were very large. They're beautiful, Keiko said in an awed voice. My grandma's house has doorknobs that look like that, Trisha announced, and she has a sparkly chandelier in the dining room. My grandma is very rich. Do you have holes in your ears? Malcolm asked. My mom does. My mom went and had holes stabbed right into her ears with a needle. I did too, Beanie called out. I have pierced ears. So do I, Mrs. Pigeon told the class. She turned her head from side to side so that they could see her small gold earrings. No, Goonie Bird said. My earrings screw in onto my ears. They have little screws that you turn. Barry Tuckerman thrust his arm into the air and waved it wildly. Around him, other children had their hands raised, too. My mom has pierced ears, Barry said loudly. Ben? Mrs. Pigeon asked next. Ben said, my mom has pierced ears, and so does my grandma. All right, class, Mrs. Pigeon said. Does anyone else have something to say which is not about pierced ears? because it is time for Goonie Bird to begin today's story. All of the hands disappeared except one. Chelsea kept her hand high in the air. Miss Pigeon sighed. Chelsea? My mom has a pierced nose, Chelsea told the class. Oh no, Keiko wailed. I'm going to be sick. Shh, the other children said. When the class was quiet, Goonie Bird began her Monday story. And here's a picture of Goonie Bird getting ready to tell her story. And you can see those earrings are really pretty big, hanging down. And now look at this next page. It's in that special print, so I know it's when Goonie Bird starts to talk. The Prince, the Palace, and the Diamond Earrings. Once upon a time, before she moved to Water Tower, when she still lived in China, Goonie Bird Green was on her front porch playing Monopoly against herself. Goonie Bird number one, the Thimble, owned all four railroads and St. Charles Place, which she liked because it was magenta. Goonie Bird two, the car, was having a harder time of it. She owned Atlantic Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue, and she liked the combination of yellow and green. She also owned both Waterworks and the Electric Company, but unfortunately, she was in jail. Suddenly, as Goonie Bird number two tried unsuccessful, uh, unsuccessfully for the second time to throw doubles and get out of jail, she heard someone calling loudly, Napoleon is missing! It was the prince who lived next door. And there's a picture of one of Goonie Bird's classmates raising his hand. Maybe that might be Felicia behind. Hands flew up in the air and Goonie Bird looked impatiently at her classmates. Why is she feeling impatient when her classmates all raise their hands? Yeah, probably because she's in the middle of her story, right? Are these really, really important questions? She asked, because I have just barely started the story. One by one, most of the hands went back down. Mrs. Pigeon had picked up the encyclopedia. Goonie Bird, Mrs. Pigeon said, I have a feeling you know this already, but Napoleon Bonaparte, she turned to the class, he was the emperor of France, she explained. Ooh, Keiko said, I love emperors. Mrs. Pigeon, still looking at the encyclopedia, went on. Napoleon was born in 1769. That's more than 200 years ago. 
Miss Pigeon! Miss Pigeon! Barry Tuckerman was halfway out of his seat waving his hand. Yes, Barry? My grandmother once saw an emperor butterfly, and now it's extinct. It was purple, Barry Tuckerman said. Goonie Bird sighed. Do you want to hear the story or not, she said. I can't wear these earrings all day. They're very heavy. Yes, we do, Miss Pigeon said. Please go on. Ready? Goonie Bird asked the class. Everyone was ready. So Goonie Bird continued. Goonie Bird, the prince called, sounding very distressed. Napoleon has disappeared. Can you help us find him? Goonie Bird carefully tucked all of the Monopoly money under the edge of the board so that it wouldn't blow away. There was a slight breeze. She had had problems with money blowing away in the past. She kept her own money collection, which she carried with her at all times, safely contained in a Ziploc bag. Then Goonie Bird set out to look for clues that might reveal the whereabouts of Napoleon. Napoleon was not the Emperor of France. He was a large black poodle. Every hand in the second grade classroom shot up, even Felicia Ann's. I knew this would happen, Goonie Bird said. I just knew it. Time for an intermission. Mrs. Pigeon, do you want to deal with this? Mrs. Pigeon nodded. She thought for a moment. Then she announced, every child who has a poodle, put your hand down. Four hands went down. Now, Mrs. Pigeon said, every child whose grandmother has a poodle, hands down. Seven more hands were lowered. Every child who knows a poodle who does interesting tricks or gets into trouble or who ran away once, hands down. Other hands went down, and now there were just three hands still in the air. Beanie, what kind of dog do you have? Mrs. Pigeon asked. Golden Retriever. That's lovely. Ben? Corgi? Good. And finally, Trisha? I don't have a dog, Trisha said sadly. I'm allergic to dogs, and my mother said I can never, ever have one, or even a cat. Not ever because I might have a terrible asthma attack, and then I would have to go to the hospital, maybe in an ambulance, and we understand, Trisha. And now, let's get back to the story, because we still don't know what happened to Napoleon, or... Or about the palace, said Keiko, and the earrings. Goonie Bird shook her head a little, so that the earrings moved and sparkled in a glamorous way. Listen for the word suddenly, Goonie Bird advised. I put one in the story already, but I like to sprinkle in several. Some other suddenlies will be coming soon. <clears throat> Goonie Bird examined the prince's backyard. She saw a place where the ground was disturbed by the corner of the fence. Look, she said, see this bit of dog hair caught in the fence? That looks like Napoleon's. See, she said next, pointing to some newly dug earth. Here's where Napoleon wiggled under the fence. What a good detective you are, the prince said to Goonie Bird. Goonie Bird let herself out of the yard and through the gate. She sniffed. She listened. Suddenly, there's the suddenly, called Malcolm. Good listening, Goonie Bird said. Then she continued. Suddenly, because of the clues that she smelled and heard, Goonie Bird moved forward. There, at the end of the alley, was an overturned garbage can. And there, with his head inside the can, was Napoleon, eating garbage. He had coffee grounds all over his face, and an orange peel was stuck on one of his ears. You naughty thing, Napoleon! Goonie Bird said, and she took hold of his collar. Napoleon burped. Oh no, Keiko cried, not garbage, not burping. Shh, the other children said. Many hands were waving in the air. Mrs. Pigeon stood up. No stories about dogs eating garbage, she said firmly. Not a single one. All the hands went down. Please, please, please tell about the palace and the prince and the earrings, Chelsea begged. I'm going to, Goonie Bird said. 
Now back to the story. Goonie Bird took Napoleon back to his house. The prince asked Goonie Bird to go to the palace for a reward. Did you get all dressed up in a ball gown? Beanie asked. Maybe a tiara? Asked Trisha. I hadn't planned to describe clothes, Goonie Bird said, but since you asked, I'll insert a little descriptive passage here. When she went to the palace, Goonie Bird was wearing clothes from the L.L. Bean catalog. She wore island hopper shorts with front flap pockets and a pointel knit tank top in sun yellow. The prince had on rugged canvas shorts and polyester and nylon pale khaki plaid short sleeve. Malcolm disappeared under his desk. Ben picked up his arithmetic arithmetic book and began to do some problems. Nicholas put his head down on his arms and closed his eyes. Goonie Bird stared at them. Am I boring you? She asked. Yes, the class said, all but Felicia Ann, who was silent, and Keiko, who was not bored at all. What color were the island hopper shorts? Keiko asked. I hope blue. As a matter of fact, they were deep sea green with true blue stripes down the sides. I might wear them to school on Wednesday. Oh, good, Keiko said. I'll continue with the story now, Goonie Bird said. It doesn't matter what clothes the prince had. The main character in this story is Goonie Bird, and it is important to tell a lot about the main character because the main character is right smack in the middle of everything. All the others are just minor characters, and it is boring to tell about their clothes. Or you could call them secondary characters, Mrs. Pigeon pointed out. Excuse me for interrupting, Goonie Bird, but I'll just write that on the board. Secondary characters. Goonie Bird waited patiently while Mrs. Pigeon wrote. Then she breathed deeply and was about to continue, but she looked at the class. She walked down the classroom aisle to Malcolm's desk and peered under it. Malcolm was asleep on the floor. Ben was doing his math, and Nicholas was making his thumbs wrestle each other. His left one was winning. This is my fault, Goonie Bird said loudly. I have failed to hold your attention. Of course, it didn't help that Mrs. Pigeon interrupted, but I blame myself for not inserting enough suspense into the story. Stories need suspense, Goonie Bird said, so I shall try to add some. Shall I continue the story now? Yes, Mrs. Pigeon said. Yes, said all the children, all but Malcolm, who was still asleep. So Goonie Bird continued. I'll start right off with a suddenly, she said. That always wakes people up. Suddenly, when they entered the palace, Goonie Bird needed to go to the bathroom. Malcolm woke up. He popped up from under his desk. I have to go to the bathroom, he said. Go, Miss Pigeon said, and pointed to the classroom door. Malcolm hurried from the classroom. Did the palace have bathrooms? Beanie asked. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to raise my hand. Yes, Goonie Bird said. The palace had two bathrooms, gentlemen and ladies. And what about the diamond rings, earrings? Trisha asked. I'll finish the story now, Goonie Bird said. When she came out of the ladies' room, Goonie Bird saw a gumball machine. In a palace? Shh, the other children said. Goonie Bird continued. Goonie Bird had not had a gumball for at least four months. She wanted one, and she had brought her money collection, since she always carried it everywhere in a very heavy Ziploc bag. Her arms had developed big muscles from carrying her money collection. Goonie Bird stopped the story for a moment and held up her arms to display her muscles. Then she went on. So Goonie Bird took a penny from her money collection and put it into the gumball machine. But instead of a gumball, out came a diamond earring. It was quite a pleasant surprise, and she screwed it into her left ear. After that, she felt lopsided, but she could see that there was another diamond earring inside the gumball machine. So she put in another penny. She got a blue gumball. It probably matched the true blue stripes on her sea green shorts, Keiko pointed out in a loud whisper. Shh, said the class. Goonie Bird continued. Goonie Bird put the blue gumball into her mouth. It made a large lump in her cheek and it tasted like spearmint. She felt doubly lopsided now. 
So she took another penny from her money collection and put it into the gumball machine. This time, she got a yellow gumball. She put the yellow gumball into her mouth, and now she had a large lump on either side of her face. Like that, and like that. But her head still felt lopsided because she only had one diamond earring. So she put another penny in and she got a red gumball. She put it into her pocket to save for later. Now her hips felt lopsided. She took another penny from her money collection. This time she got an orange gumball and put it into her other pocket and now her hips weren't lopsided anymore, but she still only had one diamond earring. Goonie Bird stopped the story and looked at the class. I'm gonna jump ahead now, she said. Mrs. Pigeon, is there a word for when an author jumps ahead in a story and skips over some things? Mrs. Pigeon thought about it. Well, when an author jumps backwards in a story, it's called a flashback. So maybe jumping ahead would be called a flash forward. Well, Goonie Bird announced, I'm flashing forward. After 20 minutes, all of the pennies in Goonie Bird's money collection were gone and the gumball machine was empty. Now Goonie Bird had 67 gumballs, two in her mouth, two in her pockets, and 63 in her Ziploc bag. Also, she had a pair of very large, glittery, dangly diamond earrings, which she wears to this day. When they saw her in the diamond earrings, everyone in the palace, including the prince, two motorcycle guys, and a lady in a wheelchair, cheered. Then they hugged and kissed and did a short but quite beautiful ballet. The end. What a lovely story, Mrs. Pigeon said. And the flash forward was very effective, Goonie Bird. I'm so glad you finally got the second earring. Goonie Bird turned her head from side to side so her classmates could admire the earrings. All of the children clapped. And look, there's Mrs. Pigeon sitting at her desk listening. Did the prince ask you to marry him? Keiko asked. What are you talking about? Goonie Bird said. The prince are already married. Mr. Howard Prynne is married to Mrs. Amanda Prynne. One prin plus one prin equals prins. The prins live next door to me with their dog, Napoleon. Oh, the children said, prins. Barry Tuckerman had jumped up and was waving his arms frantically in the air. That wasn't a true story, Barry called out. I tell only absolutely true stories, Goonie Bird said impatiently. How many times must I tell you that? No, it wasn't, because I've seen lots of pictures of palaces, and they have throne rooms and red carpets, and people get dressed up in ball gowns, and Barry, 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 Goonie Bird said with a sigh. What am I going to do with you? What do you mean, Barry asked. You're talking about a small P palace but I was talking about a capital letter ice cream shop called The Palace, where they have bathrooms, Beanie suggested, and a gumball machine with diamond earrings. Exactly, Goonie Bird said, and she took her seat. Then carefully, she unscrewed her dangly earrings. Ouch, she said, these really hurt. Malcolm returned to the classroom. Did you get out of jail, Goonie Bird? He asked. Goonie Bird looked unhappy for a moment. No, she said. Napoleon ate my Monopoly game. And that's the end of the chapter. Okay, so that was a, quite a story. And you see how she tells things and the kids think it couldn't possibly be true. But then it turns out that it really is true because she wasn't at a palace with a lowercase p, like just a big castle. She was at the palace with a capital P and it was an ice cream store. So everything she tells sounds like it means one thing and it ends up meaning another thing. That's the trick of Goonie Bird's stories. Okay, good job. See you soon.